Just keep swimming. Okay, yes, I totally ripped that off of a movie. Hey there, welcome back to Amy TV. Recently, I made a video about 10 habits of highly successful people and if you saw it, you a lot of you left comments saying that you loved it and that you wanted to see more. So today we are continuing that series. It's always good to get a refresher on this. You know, maybe you're going through a little bit of a lull right now, feeling a little bit less confident, just hearing some of these things that you can work on, things that highly successful people tend to do or a lot of them like to do to be on their A game. It's nice for us to be able to go, okay, I can do a little bit of a reset here. I can try some of these things, see if they work for me so that I can get right back on track. So if that sounds good to you, you want to hear about some habits of highly successful people, I suggest that you stay tuned for 10 more of those habits that you can try. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to this channel. I make new videos every Sunday and Wednesday, and I want to make sure you see them. Sometimes they don't get to you, and I'm like, where are you? It's there. Why aren't you watching? And that might be because you're not subscribed or you're not getting a notification. All you have to do is press those buttons, and in theory, they'll work. I hope. Here are 10 more habits of highly successful people. Starting with keeping a daily journal. This might take you back to your young, young days when we got used to have like a diary, right? Did you have a lock on your diary? I loved those. I would always pick them out at the bookstore and mom would be like, no, you can't have every single diary that the entire world creates. <laughs> but thinking about logging your days and logging the things that you do, logging not just the tasks you've completed, but wins or things that you're grateful for. Just keeping a log of that is great for your own mindset, being able to continue to push forward. You don't lose track as much. You're taking those things out of your brain and putting them down on paper. We talk a lot about that. We've talked about morning pages here. This is just another way that you can do that. A lot of successful like to do this not just for the sake of being able to go back and look at it later, but just to be able to be in that habit of writing and logging and, and really documenting in your own brain what you've accomplished. So try that if you're thinking you do want a daily writing routine and you want to do something that successful people tend to do. Simply log your day. And it doesn't have to be complicated either. You could get like the five minute journal. There's even an app where you just write three things down every day. It doesn't have to be a long extended thing. Just do what's right for you. The second habit is treating food like fuel. This sounds so lame, right? Like I, who could go for a cheeseburger right now? <laughs> but when you break it down, you know that your body starts to feel different when you're not eating the right foods, when you're not treating your body with respect. And that is extremely important when you're trying to be successful in any capacity capacity, you don't want to get sick or you don't want you to wake up one day and not feel at your best when it's a really important day or even just any other day where you're trying to be as productive as possible. When these things start to become important to you, you look at food a little bit differently because sometimes it's just not worth it to indulge when you know you have a lot riding on what you're doing. My number three habit is prioritizing time unplugged. I actually really worked hard at this on my honeymoon. You know, there were certain things I had to do which I was bummed about. I had scheduled things a little bit over my vacation. I wish I wouldn't have done that. But I did realize at a certain point, picking up my phone all the time was just not great for me being able to kind of take that time out to really truly take that vacation. Because when it comes down to it, Instagram is fun, but it's also kind of a job for me. So it's kind of hard to find that line and draw it. But if you actually set the phone aside, put it in the safe, turn it off, leave it at home, whatever the case may be, maybe it's a smaller version of that. Maybe you just have time unplugged after a certain time every day, not just your vacations. Prioritizing that time unplugged is a great way to make sure you remember what your own thoughts are, not not just what the rest of the world is trying to tell you because uh yeah that can get to be a lot overwhelming and annoying to forget what your own thoughts are you don't even realize it because you keep just filling them with other people's not good number four just keep swimming okay yes i totally ripped that off of a movie but you get what i'm saying just keep going just keep doing the thing every single day successful people know that results do not come overnight everyone that's an overnight success took a really long time to get to where they are. So just keep swimming means you have to continue to do the thing that you're trying to do, the thing you're trying to get off the ground. You know, for me, I know a lot of people ask me about starting a YouTube channel and 
it doesn't happen overnight. Some people it happens faster than others, but it still is that just keep swimming mentality. And no matter what it is that you wanna do, you have to keep pressing on. Are you not getting the job that you want? No one's calling you in for an interview. You have to just keep swimming. You have to keep putting yourself out there. You have to find new ways to make it happen. So just having that mentality is a habit. And maybe that's where some of you get hung up, right? It may not just be a habit for that to be in your head yet. Knowing that's gonna change the game for you is a really big step so just keep swimming shout out to Dory what up girl the fifth habit is super important and that is listening to feedback no matter how hard you're working on your thing or how much you think people don't understand really listening to feedback when it comes in is super important most importantly it's important to listen to that feedback from the audience that you serve so that could be your boss that could be your parent that could be your YouTube community it could be a lot of different things but listening to the feedback from those people who are directly affected by what you're doing and how you want to improve it's a massive habit that we all have to take more seriously. And it's easy to take a lot of things personally, but in reality, if someone tells you, no matter how they do it, verbally or just in their actions, what to do or how to get better, you really have to be in a position to listen so that you can make that change and move on and go forward and become successful. The sixth habit for me, I think is a fun one because we talk around here about how to-do lists are so pointless. If you haven't actually scheduled the time for something, it's not a thing. Well, a really good tip would be to limit your to-do list. So if you do still have to have tasks that you have to prioritize every day, limit it to just three items. Because when it comes down to it, how much are you actually gonna get done in one day? Really, really big things that you need to do you're probably not gonna get as many of them done as you'd like to. You know, it's very ambitious. We have big goals for ourselves, but there's always other stuff going on and things happen and somebody calls and then there's an emergency. Your boss comes in and gets your attention. Limit your to-do list so that you don't set yourself up for a massive failure at the end of the day, which does not help you the next day when you're like, oh, well, I guess I'll just use the same to-do list as yesterday because it's the same. <laughs> That's not motivating whatsoever. So if you have to use a to-do list, stay focused what are those top three things and then leverage habit number seven which is eat the frog what is the biggest thing on that list that you need to do that's what you should be doing first thing get it out of the way you are at your best earlier in the day i know a lot of you do not believe me on this right we talk about this in the early morning videos where you're like i don't know amy says i'm at my best at five o'clock in the morning but i believe that that is not true <laughs> i get it you know yourself better than i know you but i know that your body is ready to go when you wake up in the morning and as you get going and even into lunchtime you're really at your best and in the afternoon we kind of start tapering off a little bit we're ready to kind of like clock out for the day we kind of want to go home and watch our soap so making sure you get that big thing done first thing helps you to prevent that failure later on because if you pick that big task to be last and you have the least amount of energy the least amount of ambition you really feel like you did a lot earlier earlier in the day and you just can't remember what it was but you did that's not going to be good for that really big project getting done on time habit number eight is 20 minute naps or short afternoon naps now this is a piece of advice that I don't necessarily take myself, but I actually sometimes think it's good because of one specific reason. When I wake up in the morning, whenever I feel the tendency to hit the snooze, I ask myself, oh, what if you woke up and just took a nap later? And I always kind of sell myself on that proposition, like, oh, I could just take a nap in the afternoon. That's what highly successful people do. So I will wake up on time early in the morning, be at my best, and then if I'm still tired later, I'll take a nap. But I never need one, <laughs> so that's really not working for me. I don't take naps in the afternoon. But there are a lot of highly successful people that do that. And something as simple as just 20 minutes in the middle of the afternoon to kind of revamp during that time I was just talking about where you're sort of tapering off and things are not good. Re-energizing, just giving yourself 20 minutes. You're not going into a full sleep cycle because that would not be good, okay? I have actually read about a lot of CEOs that do this and they even have a room that is designated for naps at their organization. So think about that, you know, can you fit in a little bit of shut eye just enough to re-energize so the second half of your day could be effective. The number nine habit is to keep 
moving. So anytime you can find an opportunity to move and not be sedentary is a great idea. A lot of us have sedentary lifestyles. I know I'm sitting at this computer a lot of the time and I'm editing videos, I'm sitting in meetings, I'm sitting on a phone call. You know, could I be walking around the block while I take that phone call? I love treadmill and tweets. I will go upstairs to use a treadmill in my apartment complex and I will just walk. Doesn't matter how fast, I will just move my body as I tweet back a lot of you or if I'm just creating some other kind of content. I'll write Instagram captions while I'm on the treadmill or I'll reply to emails. What can you do to continually keep moving so you're not sitting too much throughout the day? Because I don't know if you've heard this whole sitting thing. It feels really easy. Yeah, it's killing us slowly and it's kind of scary. And the number 10 habit of highly successful people that you can try is very much recommended and that is always keep learning. It's very easy to get comfortable in what you do when you're just doing, doing, doing all the time. You're on the hamster wheel. You know how to do what you're doing. It can get a little bit boring. You never really change anything. You never revitalize how you proceed. And that is how just dormant status quo happens and we don't continue to get better. So always continuing to learn is super important. Even if it's something that's just fun for you, are you taking a foreign language class? Like it doesn't matter what it is, always keep learning. If you work in a specific industry, another thing you could do is just be learning about the industry every single day. Never make assumptions that you always know what's going to happen. You can stay tuned to really, really smart news outlets and always be learning. Just from my own experience, I know that this is important because you can get so complacent if you do not just keep challenging your brain and it just makes everything so much more interesting when you just keep learning. And it's really simple. There's so many resources we have available to us. You know, remember when we talked about Tyra's book a few weeks ago, when she had to go to the library to learn things? We don't have to do that. We've got the internet, we've got our smartphones. If we want, TV could teach us some things, but probably not as many good things as we would like. Always keep learning. Find the resources that are gonna move you forward. If you enjoyed these tips slash habits for being more successful, then please tell me by giving this video a thumbs up. That is a big indicator of what I'm doing is right for you. Hence listening to feedback. Remember that one. And if you want to see this series continue, if you'd like to hear 10 more tips, then I want to see the words more please in the comments below. That's all for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it as always. Make sure you subscribe for good vibes and remember to continue to go after the life that you want. Cheers.